Maybe maintain order. All right, we're back on the record. State of Florida versus Ashley MacArthur. Defendant is present with counsel. Assistant State Attorney is present. I think we had a couple of people that were reacting during testimony that are being talked to outside. When they come back in, I'll make my speech one more time about that. And I think otherwise we're ready, but I need to wait till that's taken care of. Mr. Barasset, while we're here, I do not, Mr. Barry Barasset or Mr. John Barasset or even Ms. Jensen, if you do not want me to say a word about exhibit numbers, I won't. Um, my reason for saying it is the record, but, and I'm only looking at one piece of paper and not having to juggle mul multiple pieces of paper, but I certainly can stop saying anything. I have no problem with talking sometimes. Okay. All right, so just a reminder one more time about the rules. You are welcome to be here. You are welcome to watch the trial. If you need to have a conversation with somebody, and I'm not talking about our media's doing their own thing and honestly have been quiet as mice and been very, I haven't even noticed them really, so that's not the issue. Um, but. If you need to have a conversation that's more than a word, then you need to step outside. There should be no facial expressions in the sense of reactions to testimony. We all have facial expressions, but there should be no smiling, no eye rolling. The jurors, you can look at the jurors, but I've had court security noticing certain people glaring or eyeballing or repeatedly staring at the jury and that's not appropriate either it's if you're here to watch the trial let's watch the trial and uh, you're welcome otherwise <coughs> i think with that miss jensen unless there's any issues i'm ready ready judge mr barry barasset ready your honor mr john barasset yes ma'am ready who's handling the next witness who i believe is marcus savage i am your honor okay let's go My wife is a bit. She throws it away. That's starting to explain some things, Mr. Ross. <laughs> okay, everybody may be seated. The defendant is present with counsel. Assistant State Attorney is present. I'm turning it to you with some trepidation. How are we back there? And we're good? We got a coffee pot. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was supposed to ask you about that this morning. I'm sorry. I think I got sidetracked on something else. Um, so you got a coffee pot, but I mean, the mystery of the snacks. Have oh, we, are we good on that? Yeah. <laughs> and, and do they have coffee for you to put in the yes. coffee pot and cups? Yes. yes. Y'all keep me posted. Ms. Jensen, call your next witness. State calls Marcus Savage. Marcus Savage. Do me a favor, though. I'm sorry to keep reiterating this. The coffee pot... Please turn it off tonight. Sound like a plan? Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Have a seat. I'll pull up to the microphone. State your name and spell your last name, please. Marcus Savage, S-A-V-A-G-E. Where are you employed? At the Pensacola Police Department. What do you do for the Pensacola Police Department? I am a gun crimes detective. How long have you been in law enforcement? About six years now. 
Let me take you to September of 2017. Were you assigned to assist in the investigation of Taylor Wright's whereabouts? I was. And as part of that assistance, did you get some video surveillance? I did. From where? Uh, the Tum Thumb on that's like Nine Mile, Nine Mile Road. Nine Mile's really long. So <laughs> it's like the corner of Nine Mile and uh, Beulah. And for what date and time? Um, can't remember the exact date and time. If I show you um, an offense report, would that help refresh yes. your memory? On 9 28, 2017, about 1,400 hours. I'm sorry, 9 29, sorry. That's when, that's when I burned, um, got the video burned. Okay. September 29th. But what's the date of the actual surveillance? Um, September 8th, 2017. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Um, and when you got the surveillance from the Tom Thumb, um, who did you get it from? Um, one of the managers that was working there. Okay. And did you review the um, video surveillance before your testimony today? I did. I have no objection. To its admission? Judge, with no objection uh, from the defense, the state would move in states 43. All right, it's received as states, get there, 43. And permission to publish? You may publish. Tell the jury when um, there's something of interest. At the top of the screen up there is the sorry. Let's see. The top of the screen up there is the vehicle that uh, Miss MacArthur was driving at the gas pump. Then showing her exiting the vehicle and walking into the store. Can you read the, the date and time right here? Yes, September 8th, 2017, 11.48 a.m. Miss MacArthur in a white shirt inside the store. Here she picked up a beverage, another item, and then walked to the register to check out.
and she's asking the store, and walking back over to the uh, silver truck that she arrived in. Does the truck pull out from the pump and then leave? No. It, the truck doesn't pull out? I'm sorry, it pulls out from the pump and then it... Yeah, it does leave, I'm sorry. It does leave, yes. Okay. Sorry. Those are my questions, thank you. All right, Mr. John Ross, it's going to ask you questions. If they're just yes or no, answer yes or no, please, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. You assisted in other areas of this case as well, correct? Correct. Uh, on or about October 19, 2017, uh, you helped participate in a search of uh, a property out on Britt Road, a farm area? Correct. And part of your um, job out there was to participate in the search of the residents out there? Yes, correct. And as part of your job of searching the residents, did you collect any items of evidence? Um, not that I recall in the residence. No. Did you search anywhere else at the property out there? Yeah, just the, yeah, no, no other, no other property, no other areas in the property. Okay, just inside the residence. Correct. No further questions. All right, Ms. Jensen. I don't have anything else. Is he free to go? Yes, ma'am. Is he completely free, Mr. John Barossa? I'm sorry. Yeah, he's free to go. Yes, sir. All right, you're free. Just don't discuss your testimony. Thank you. Call your next witness. Say call Steve Holmes. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Have a seat. Pull up to the microphone and state your name. Spell your last name, please. Steve Holmes, H-O-O-M-E-S. Mr. Holmes, where are you employed? Uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, almost 30 years. Okay. Well, what do you do for Fish and Wildlife? I'm an officer assigned in Santa Rosa County. Okay, let me take you to October 19th of 2017. Did the Pensacola Police Department request your assistance? Yes, they did. For what? Uh, they asked us to bring a small boat and a utility vehicle, uh, ATV, uh, to assist them with a search warrant. And where, what was the area you were to search? Um, that morning we were briefed that it was an area off of Britt Road. Where did the briefing take place? It was at a church in Canton, and I'm not sure okay. the exact name of it. Do you know approximately what time um, the briefing took place? Uh, yes, it was early that morning, 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And what were you to be looking for at the property off Brent Road? Uh, we were looking for a body. How many people or agencies um, were out there on the 19th? Uh, there were... Including myself, three officers from our agency. There were um, officers from Pensacola Police Department, Escambia County Sheriff's Office, and there was a, uh, a team of search and rescue personnel uh, that had cadaver dogs at this location. Okay. Do you remember if FDLE, FDLE was out there as well? Initially, I'm not sure. Okay. I don't but at least Fish and Wildlife, Pensacola Police Department, Sheriff's Office, and search and rescue. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And after you had the briefing, um, did everyone go out to the, the property on Burt Road? 
Yes, we caravan from the church to that property. Okay, and then once you got out to the property, um, describe what everyone did that you saw. Um, initially, the search and rescue teams, they organized themselves with their dogs, and they went out in separate teams and searched the properties. Okay. Um, there were some personnel, I'm not sure what agency they were with, whether PPD or whatever, searching a barn on the property. Okay. Uh, we were tasked with launching a small boat into a pond that was located on the property. Uh, one of our officers got on the boat with a dog handler and a cadaver dog, and they, they searched the, the pond, which was crystal clear and um, didn't take them very long to, to search the pond. Okay. And then were there other individuals that were walking the property? Yes. Was anything found initially? No. Okay. Um, was something found eventually? <laughs> I'm sorry? Was, was something found eventually? Yes, ma'am. Okay. About how long into the search um, was the body found? Um, it, was a, it was around lunchtime. Okay. Uh, so noon, four hours, I would guess. Okay. Four to five hours. And describe, um, I mean, describe the circumstances of, of how something was discovered. Okay, um, uh, Lieutenant McCoy with PPD, our officers, we kind of held back because we didn't know if I'd interfere with the dogs. And he finally came to us and asked us to help him with, with the search. So we went to the south side of the property, and there was a large pile of limbs that were freshly cut back there. Um, it looked like they were in a, like a burn pile. So we searched that. Um, when we were going to that location, we saw a road on the west side of the property, like a little road that had been mowed recently, which kind of piqued our interest. Um, after we searched the debris pile, we found nothing. Brought cadaver dogs over there. We went back to the barn, and me and two other Fish and Wildlife officers, we decided to walk down the fence line where we'd seen this area. We were walking down this fence line. I saw some branches that were piled up on the edge of the woods, and they were fresh, about the same age as the ones that were on the uh, on the property. Um, so I told him to hold up. Let's see what this is. I started pulling them away, and I looked underneath it. I found uh, it was a pile of potting soil and concrete, and I noticed a small metal grommet from a tarp okay. on the ground. Um, Officer Petty, who was with me, he lifted a piece of the concrete up, and uh, when he did, he uncovered a, just a bunch of maggots. He put it back down, and then I looked to the right probably a couple of feet, and um, I saw a portion of a human skull that was exposed from the ground. And then at that point, what did you do? At that point, we backed out, notified the authorities that we had uh, located a body, and they came and put crime scene tape up, and, okay. and that basically ended our involvement. Okay, very good. Thank you. Those are all my questions. All right, Mr. John Ross is going to ask you questions. If it's just yes or no, answer yes or no, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, officer. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Um, Went to this pile in the middle of the property, which was clearly kind of set up pile of debris. It looks like maybe to burn in the future. Is that correct? Yes. On the way to that, you clearly saw an area that on the other side of the property that looked like a mowed strip or road. Is that what you're describing for the jury? Yes, sir. Okay. So not on the Brit property, just off the Brit property. Yes, sir. Correct? And when you got back to the barn, you thought to yourself, well, we should just go check that out. Correct? That's correct. And when you got over, how far from the barn is it to where this little mowed strip was on the other side of the fence, approximately? From the barn? Because the fence, you have to go out and come around. So it was probably okay. 50 yards from where the fence starts. To, to, the, to the barn. To that trail. Okay. And the, the limbs... You could see the limbs from the Brit property, correct? Correct. Okay. And you said they were freshly cut. Um, is that because the ends of them were kind of white looking? Is that the inside of the, the um, wood had not turned gray? That and the leaves weren't completely brown. They okay. were dried, but they weren't brown. And as soon as you 
and whoever was with you removed some of the limbs, clearly you had no problem seeing any, I think you described it as what looked like potting soil and concrete, correct? That's correct. I mean, once the limbs were gone, that was very obvious to you, correct? Absolutely. All right. And it sounds like that, and I may have been mistaken here, but the while one officer was moving some concrete, you looked over and saw ex a skull exposed above ground, correct? It was just under the kind of the limbs. Yes, it was a little bit further back in the edge of the woods, but he picked up the concrete, put it back down. Then I looked to my right, I was just looking at that area is whenever I saw a portion of a, a skull that was exposed. I have one moment. No further questions. Ms. Jensen. No further questions. Is he completely free? Yes, ma'am. Mr. John Barasa? Yes, ma'am. You're, com you're completely released, but don't discuss your testimony. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you. thank you. Ms. Jensen. State calls Taryn Emsweiler. Is she your witness? Your witness? Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Have a seat. Pull on up to the microphone. And state your name and spell your first and last name. My name is Taryn Emsweiler, T-A-R-Y-N-E-M-S-W-I-L-E-R. Ms. Emsweiler, where are you employed? I'm employed with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in the Pensacola Regional Operations Center. What do you do for FDLE? I'm a crime laboratory analyst in the crime scene section. And what education do you have? I have a bachelor's of psychology, or about, so I'm sorry, a bachelor's of science in psychology with a minor in anthropology and a master's in forensic science. Okay. I'm going to direct your attention to October 19th of 2017. Were you called out to 2201 Britt Road? Yes, I was. Okay. And for what purpose? I was called to assist Pensacola Police Department in searching for a missing individual. Okay. Approximately what time did you arrive on Britt Road? Around 8.40 a.m. And did you take photographs or were photographs taken of the Britt Road property just kind of overall? Yes. Just for the record, I showed these to Mr. Barasset, Mr. Barry Barasset on our lunch break. Some numbers just saying. 44 through 59. No objection. Okay. I can admit them? Yes. Okay. Judge, this time without objection from the defense, the state would move in states 44 through 59. They're received without objection. Now, at some point, um, a disturbance or an area of interest was found. Do you know approximately when that happened after you got there? Uh, it was shortly before 12:20 uh, p.m. Okay. And um, were human remains located? Yes. Okay. Were photos taken of that location as well as the recovery of those remains? Yes, they were. Again, for the record, I showed these to Mr. Barasa at lunch. 60 through 75. No objection. All right, received um, without objection, 60 through 75. Judge, at this time, I would. I'm sorry. 
Well, you finish your sentence. I'm though. sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Um, I would ask to publish 44 through 75. Let me see counsel at the bench with the court reporter for a second. You can go ahead and put those up there. Publish. All right, Ms. Insweather, I am showing you State's Exhibit Number 44. And this is going to be awkward because you're going to have to turn behind you, but talk in the microphone. <laughs> you can build that microphone bent, so you can pull it to you. I can't. Yes, it bends. You can't extract it, but you can pull it towards you. Okay. This is States 44. What does this photo show? This is a photograph of the trailer on the property at 2201 Britt Road. This is the south side of the trailer. This is States Exhibit 45. This is a photograph of the kitchen inside the trailer. States Exhibit 46. Photograph of the living room area inside the trailer. States Exhibit 47. This is a photograph of the hallway in the trailer. It ran along the north side. This is State's Exhibit 48. This is a photograph of the north side and east side of the red barn that was on the property. This is State's 49. This is a photograph of the stables on the east side of the barn. State's Exhibit 50. A photograph of the east side of the barn looking straight at it. And this was, was this like some type of corral or something over here? Yes, there were several fenced-in areas. Um, so I believe, I believe this was part of a fenced-in area that was on the property. This is States 51. This is a door that led into a small tool room, which was on the bottom floor of the barn. Small pool room? Yes, a tool room. Oh, tool, I'm sorry. This is States 52. This would be the north wall of the tool room. Of the tool room. And did you do anything with these um, garments right here? Yes, I searched this room with luminol, um, which is a search tool for suspected blood. And uh, luminescence showed up on the yellow rain jacket, so I collected it as an item of evidence. This is State's Exhibit 53. This is one of the stables um, in the barn. States 54. And then a photograph of the interior of the stable. States 55. Another photograph of one of the stables in the barn. States 56. This is a photograph of the south side of the barn. States 57. And this is the south side and west side of the barn. States 58. So this is an opening that was on the north side of the barn in between um, the two sets of stables. States 59. These are uh, items that were located inside the opening that we just saw in the previous photograph, um, and I collected these items as um, items of evidence. And what is this right here? Uh, I believe those were um, possibly straps for a hammock. This is State 60. What is this show? This is a photograph um, facing south, showing the west side of the barn. And is this a law enforcement personnel over here? Yes, it is. This is State's Exhibit 61. So this is a photograph. Uh, you can see the west side of the barn, and then there's a fence that ran along the west side of the property. This is State's Exhibit 62. Uh, another close-up photograph of the fence along the west side of the property, and the remains were located um, in the wooded area over here. State 63. So a close-up photograph of where the remains were located. These pieces right here were concrete. State 65. Another photograph of the remains in the wooded area and the pieces of concrete. Sorry, what was that 64 by? 64? Thank you. This is state 65. 
This is a photograph um, taken from the west side of the fence on the property facing north. Do you need me to take that light down? <coughs> I wanted Ms. Jensen to be able to see, but it's more important that you see, so... Well, thanks. <laughs> I'll just put it like that. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Let's again, Estate 65. Uh, so this is a photograph taken from the west side of the fence that ran along the west side of the property, and this is looking facing north. And did the end of the fence stop right about here? Yeah, right about there, you were able to walk around to enter this area. And then the trailer would have been over here to the right? Uh, yes, the trailer would have been located over in this area. This is Stacey's exhibit 66. This is a close-up of the remains. Um, you can see items, uh, or you can see pieces of concrete, some soil, and then this beige over here is the um, skull. State 67. Uh, another closer up photograph, concrete, soil, and this beige part is the skull. State 68. Uh, another photograph of the remains. Um, this is after some of the pieces of concrete have been pulled back. Uh, you can see a dark covering that was also in the area. This was a hammock. Um, and then you can see the skull and this brown is um, suspected hair. And is this after the limbs and some debris on top were removed? Yes, uh, we were cleared uh, brushes and shrubs and larger items from the area to gain better access to the remains. This is State 69. This is an overall photograph um, after a lot of the area had been cleared. State 70. This is a photograph of the remains. More of the area had been cleared and pieces of concrete had been pulled back. State 71. This is a photograph of the remains after the pieces of concrete have been removed. Uh, the skull is up here with suspected hair, and then this dark blue item is the hammock. State 72. Uh, closer photograph of the skull. Um, you can start to see a t-shirt, and the hammock has been pulled back some. This is State 73. This is a photograph of a necklace that was located around uh, what essentially would be the neck. It was located right below the skull. This is State 74. Uh, this is a photograph of the brand of hammock that it was. So this is actually upside down. It was E-N-O. This is State 75. It's a photograph of the remains after the hammock has been removed. Were those remains later identified as Taylor Wright? Uh, yes, they were. Okay. And did you attend the autopsy of Taylor Wright the next day? Yes, I did. During the course of the autopsy, were you provided with a projectile from her skull? I was informed that there was uh, most likely a projectile inside the skull. However, I collected it a few days later after they took it out on October 24th. Okay. And did you turn um, the projectile into evidence? Yes, I did. As which FDLE exhibit number? Do you mind if I look at my notes? Please. It was submitted as FDLE item number 18. Thank you, ma'am. Those are all my questions. All right, Mr. Perry, we're also just going to ask you questions, and if they're just yes or no, answer yes or no, please. Good afternoon, Ms. Anzuela. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. How many items of evidence did you collect from uh, Brett, Brett Lane or Brett Road? I'll have to look at my notes Okay. count them all. You probably got a list or something, don't you?
Um, 11 items. 11 items from Brett Lane? Yes. Okay. And uh, one of those items you said was uh, we saw a picture number 52 of a rain jacket. It was yellow, I that believe. Is exhibit 52, state exhibit. Did you do any test on that? I did test uh, areas of it with phenothaline, which is a presumptive test for suspected blood. And uh, what were the results? There was an area on the back of it that gave positive results and an area on the sleeve that gave negative results. And that was a presumptive test? Yes. Did you ever do a further test to determine whether it was actually blood? I do not have that capability. Okay. Did you do anything to attempt to match any of those items with anything else, any DNA or anything? I submitted the rain jacket to biology for further examination. But you did not conduct any further examination? Not personally, no. Did you collect another exhibit that uh, you gave a presumptive test for blood as well? Uh, I did test something at the scene that tested negative, so I did not collect it. What was that, a stick? Yes, it was a small wooden stick um, that was from the wooded area, maybe like a small tree branch. But it was negative, is that correct? That's correct. You took photographs of, of the entire area, is that correct? Yes. Took photographs inside the uh, uh, trailer as well? Yes. Have a moment. I'd like to show you a few exhibits if I could. My last one was five, was it not? The photographs that the state showed you, those weren't all the photographs that you took, were they? That's correct. photographs. Uh, do you recognize those photographs? Yes, I do. Uh, 
Are they fair and accurate representations of what they purport to be? Yes, they are. Are they photographs that were taken by you? They were taken by my assistant, uh, Mary Martelli, under my direction. At this time, I'd like to offer those exhibits into evidence. Five, six, seven, eight, and I believe it was nine. Is that correct? Okay, can't. Five has already been received. So oh, excuse me. Six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, six, seven, eight, and nine. May I just look at them? Yes. Just defense six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, uh, if you could, would you take, uh, begin with six, if you'd hold that up, please? And would you tell the jury uh, what that's a photograph of? This is a photograph of the bedroom that was at the end of the hallway in the trailer. Okay, and in the closet, do you observe any type of mixtures or concrete or bags of stuff? Yes, there's a bag of um, possible quick concrete or mortar. Okay. Okay, and that is number six. Would you go to number seven, please? Number seven is a photograph of the bathroom that was in the trailer. And was there con some construction work being done there? Yes, it appeared so. Okay, and that's the photograph of the, uh, I think it was, uh, um, it's a little hard to see from here, but isn't it photographs of cans of material and stuff like that? Uh, yes, there's several buckets, um, some closed, some open. Okay, okay, we'd go to number eight, please. Defense exhibit number eight. Okay, and would you describe to the jury what that's a photograph of and where it was taken? This was another photograph that was taken in the bedroom that was at the end of the hallway. Um, and there are several bags of concrete style material. Okay. And, uh, Defense exhibit number nine. This is another photograph that was taken in the master bedroom, um, just a close up of those bags, the same as the last photo. Okay. Thank you. May I have a word with Ms. Jensen? Folks, I didn't tell you this earlier, but you may understand you'll get all the exhibits to take back with you and have them to look at. Did you participate in any other searches? Um, I just searched the property. The property? Okay. May I have a second? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. All right, Ms. Jensen. And thank you, Ms. Jensen. Those this bags that you keep referring to as concrete, it's, it's versa bond mortar or something to that effect, isn't it? One of them is, yes. Okay, and what's the other one? The other one says quick set light um, setting joint compound. Thank you, ma'am. Is she completely free? Yes. She was subpoenaed by us, but I think we'll excuse her as well. All right, you're completely free. Don't discuss your testimony, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right, call your next witness. State calls Lionel Martinez. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. All right, have a seat. Pull up to the microphone. State your name and spell your first and last name. Lionel Martinez Jr., M A R T I N E Z. Spell your first name for me. L I O N I L. You may inquire. Mr. Martinez, where are you employed? I'm employed with the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. What do you do for the Sheriff's Office? I am an investigator in Major Crimes Division. How long have you been in law enforcement? I've been in law enforcement for 22 years. Let me take you to October of 2017. Were you assigned to assist uh, the Pensacola Police Department with a missing person? Yes. And as part of that assistance, did you respond to Britt Road on October 19th, 2017? Yes. Were you present when human remains were found? Yes. And did you get close enough 
um, to see any substance or material on the on the remains? Yes. Okay. What did you see? Um, it was a mound of concrete and potting soil. After um, October 19th, did you go into any hardware type of store? Yes. Where did you go? I went to the Home Depot on West Nine Mile Road. And do you know about how close or how far that Home Depot is to the Britt Road location? It's about 15 minutes. And were you able to obtain anything relevant at the Home Depot on Nine Mile Road? Uh, yes. What did you find? Uh, I was able to obtain video from the store security system and a receipt. from the defense, the state would move in state 76, which is a receipt from Home Depot, state 77, which is the video surveillance from Home Depot, states 78 through 86, which are photographs from Home Depot. All right, those will be received as 76 through 86 as described. And permission to publish the video surveillance? You may. This is a uh, black Jeep Wrangler pulling into the parking lot. Let us know when we see something. Yes, ma'am. Right here, you will see uh, Ashley MacArthur and an employee worker from Home Depot coming back to the uh, Seth Child Count. Since there's not a timestamp, do you remember the date and time of this? Uh, How about if I show you the receipt? Yes, ma'am. All right, if I could approach with state 76. You can, may. Approach. It is September 9th, 2017 at 107 p.m.
here's another angle you can see the contents of the cart. Two bags of potting soil and the bags of uh, cement. And is that Miss MacArthur to your left? Right here. And she pays with cash. And then as she's exiting, she discards paperwork right in there. And then, there they are. Going back to the direction where the black Jeep was parked. of the receipt of the items purchased um, September 9th, 2017 at 107 p.m. Did you then go take photos of each of those items from the receipt? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And Judge, State 78 through 86 have been admitted. If I could just publish for the jury. Sure. What is this? This is the 50-pound uh, bag of sacrete fast set concrete mix. This is state 79. Oh, same thing. So was that just the? Yes, ma'am. The uh, top part is the label, and underneath is okay. where the uh, item is located. Gotcha. This is state 80. That is the. Uh, label for the concrete, or excuse me, the uh, topsoil. Okay. And then is this just a picture of that topsoil? This is States 81? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is States 82? Again, the label for the uh, potting soil. Okay. And then is that a photo of the potting soil in States 83? Yes. This is States 84? That's the 40-pound bag of sacrum. Okay. And then below it is? A bag? Yes, ma'am. That's States 85 for the record. This is States 86, which is just a close up of States 85. Um, what does that say? Uh, it gives the set time and also the weight of the package. my questions. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Is it Mr. John Barasset on this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No questions, Your Honor. All right. Is he free to go? Or Ms. Jensen, I guess he's, you didn't have any, they didn't have questions. You don't have any more. No, is he free, completely free? Yes. And he's completely free. So just don't discuss your testimony. Yes, Thank you.
All right, Ms. Jensen, call your next witness. Two seconds, please. Okay. Staples Devontae Sims. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Have a seat. Pull on up to that microphone. Spell your name first and last, please. D E V O N T S I M S. You're Devontae Sims? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you. Mr. Sims, what is your date of birth? 82792. Say that again for me. 82792. <clears throat> Back in September of 2017, where did you work? Home Depot. Do you still work there? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and um, what do you do for Home Depot? I uh, work in Millworks and the service desk. Let me take you back to September 9th of 2017. Do you remember helping a lady with concrete? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Have you been interviewed on numerous occasions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and how did you first come into contact um, with this lady? Uh, I was walking, <clears throat> sorry, I was walking through the store and asked her, did she need help? Okay. And where was she when you first saw her? Uh, she was near my department in the middle of the store. And when you asked her if she needed help, um, what was she looking at or what was she doing at that point? Uh, she was looking for, well, she was walking towards the concrete and asked her, did she need help? She said yes. And I was asking her what she was using the, what she had wanted to get and what she was using it for. Okay. And what was she, um, what was she looking for? Uh, type of concrete. What type of concrete? Uh, she's, she just said she was, <clears throat> sorry. Okay. Uh, like a faceting concrete. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? A faceting concrete. Thank you. Are there different types? Uh, there, yes, ma'am. Okay, what are the different types? Uh, there's a regular um, faceting concrete that cures, <coughs> cures in about 30 minutes, and then there's just a regular concrete that you would use for a driveway. Okay. And which one did she want? Uh, the faceting. And um, at that point, did she have anything else in her cart? Uh, yes, ma'am. What was that? She had two bags of potting soil. Okay. And did you um, help her with the concrete? Uh, yes, ma'am. What did you do? I loaded it into the cart and then walked her up to self checkout to check out. Okay. And after she checked out, did you walk her to her Jeep? Yes, ma'am. All right. And um, once you got to her Jeep, what did you do? Uh, well, we started talking about the Jeep. Um, <laughs> Do you remember what color it was? It was a black Jeep. Okay. And then I asked her where she wanted it at. Where she wanted the what? The uh, materials that she bought. Okay. Um, I asked her if she wanted it in the trunk. She said no. I asked her if she wanted it in the back seat. She also said no. I asked her if she wanted it in the front. She said yes. Okay. And then did you put um, the concrete in the front seat? Yes, ma'am. I put the, con the two bags of concrete on the floorboard and the uh, two bags of pot and soil in the seat. Was, um, was this lady by herself? Yes, ma'am. Did you ask her what she was doing with the concrete? Yes, ma'am. What did she say? Uh, she said that she was making a flower bed. <laughs> Are you familiar with VersaBond mortar? Yes, ma'am. What is that? That is used for tile. And is it textured or not textured? It's not textured. And what about quick set light joint setting? I th I'm not sure what that is. But okay. I think um, what, what I was supposed to say is um, uh, fast setting, because I, I think it's supposed to say um, fast setting on there. Thank you, those are all my questions.
Mr. John Barras that's going to ask you some questions, and if it's just yes or no, answer yes or no. Okay. Okay. Can I please have states? 76 and 78 through 86. There's <coughs> a photograph, I think it's 78 through 86. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? When uh, you spoke to this woman, as you just told the jury, it wasn't that she was just looking for fast-setting concrete, correct? Yes, sir. I mean, she indicated to you a project she was working on, correct? Yes, sir. Was she talking about building or working on a planter, something for flowers? Yes, sir. Did she mention something about a sidewalk as well? Do you remember anything about sidewalk? Yes, sir. Nothing about sidewalk? Okay. Now... May I approach the witness? You may. I'm going to show you what's been marked or actually introduced into evidence of state 76 and then state 78 all the way through 86. Just take a moment to, to look at those and see. 76 is a receipt uh, that's been entered as a receipt from Home Depot. Uh, and then the photographs are uh, the items that were purchased that correspond to the receipt. So take a moment to look over that. Those appear, those photographs appear to be the items that you uh, depict the items that you helped this woman with. Yes, sir. And, and the receipt appeared to be the, the purchase for those items. Yes, sir. All right, let, let's talk about um, first the, the concrete material. Um, as the receipt shows and the photograph shows, uh, this woman purchased two different types of concrete material, correct? Yes, sir. And, and each of those had their own specific purpose, correct? Yes, sir. For different types of projects, right? Yes, sir. One of the things um, that was purchased was, I think you said, a fast setting concrete. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Now, there are really um, at Home Depot three types of, of concrete. There's regular setting concrete, correct? Yes, sir. There's fast setting concrete, correct? Yes, sir. And then there's actually something called rapid setting concrete, correct? Yes, sir. May seem obvious, but rapid setting concrete is the fastest, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And that was not purchased by this woman, correct? Yes, sir. Now, this woman also purchased something called um, patcher concrete, P A T C H E R concrete, correct? Yes, sir. Which is, again, different than the fast setting concrete, correct? Yes, sir. Used for a different purpose, correct? Yes, sir. Um, and the patcher concrete is substantially more expensive than just buying a regular bag of like fast setting concrete, correct? Yes, sir. Like a few dollars. Wait, isn't it like three to four times more expensive? Like a bag of concrete may run you was these days three fifty four bucks. A uh, regular bag, yes, sir. And then the, the, this patcher's close to twenty something dollars, correct? Mm, give or take a few dollars. Okay. Um, these bags of concrete are. Um, you look like you're in pretty good shape. Yes, sir. <laughs> These bags of concrete are pretty heavy, aren't they? Yes, sir. Especially if um, I went out to Home Depot recently. They'll keep those things down low, okay? And so you're having to bend over to pick up. One of those bags is 50 pounds, correct? Yes, sir. The other bag's 40 pounds, correct? Yes, sir. Even for you, they're heavy, aren't they? Correct? Yes, sir. All right. And you did the you did the loading of those bags into the cart, correct? Yes, sir. You did the loading of those bags into the jeep, correct? Yes, sir. Now, it sounds like before you um, met this this woman, that there were some other materials in the cart, correct? Yes, sir. And it may be the the photographs of receipt help you remember there was some potting soil 
in the cart, correct? Yes, sir. And the brand that was purchased by this woman, may I approach the witness? Yes. The brand of potting mix that was purchased by this woman was uh, Miracle Grow, correct? Yes, sir. Clearly, um, not saying potting spoils real expensive, but clearly one of the more expensive brands that y'all carry at Home Depot, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and certainly there's store brands or lower brands than that, correct? Yes, sir. And the other item purchased uh, was not the not the the other dirt type substance that was purchased was not the same thing as potting soil. It was like a lawn or top soil, correct? Yes, sir. So two different types of uh, dirt material, correct? Yes, sir. Again, used for kind of a, each for its own little project, correct? Yes, sir. And the, the lawn soil purchased um, by this woman, what brand was that? It was Scott's. Again, one of y'all more expensive brands at Home Depot, correct? Yes, sir. There's certainly lower costing brands, correct? Yes, sir. One moment. No further questions. Ms. Jensen. Is the concrete that this lady purchased, is it textured? Uh, no, ma'am. It's uh, like a uh, fine dust. Is, that, is it like rocky? No, ma'am. What's it says? No, ma'am. Mr. Sims, do you remember um, coming down to the state attorney's office and talking to myself and my legal assistant? Yes, ma'am. And you looked at a photograph of some concrete. Did you not? Yes, ma'am. Show you uh, what's been admitted. This is a state's exhibit 67. Can you just get some? I know it's been admitted, but just so he sees it. Council, for, for, for please mute the live screen. Okay. Mr. Sims, you mm -hmm. wait, wait, wait. Oh. Wait, wait. Do you remember coming down to my office and, I, and you looked at a picture? Yes, and I'm going to show you what's been previously admitted as States Exhibit 67. Do you remember looking at that um, concrete type material? Yes, ma'am. And um, did you not say that that material was Objection. consistent? Excuse me. Thank you. Go ahead. Did you not say that the material was consistent with the concrete that this lady brought? Yes, ma'am. And did you also say that the Miracle Grow, I believe, had little like little white pieces or pebbles or something in it consistent with that soil. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Jimmy, my date not from three points about the full floor truck here. Okay. We can already end here. Is he completely free? Yes, ma'am. Is he completely yes, free? You are completely free? <laughs> All right. I thought you might flash me that smile. <laughs> All right. Um, you better get out of the building quickly before they think of something. <laughs> don't discuss your testimony. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't we take a short comfort break, and then we'll come back and wrap it up. Leave your notepads and pencils. And Mr. John Barras said you probably don't need to approach on a point that we could talk about after the fact. I apologize. Okay. But let's talk about something else for a minute. Um, obviously, we're gaining some speed and momentum, which is good news. We may have some witnesses that may take a little longer. I want to try to see how far we can get today within reason. 
Well, let me talk to you about what's coming across my computer is updated information about this hurricane. And um, the reason it does is because that's one of my duties here is um, sort of the judge on, when I say judge on hurricanes, just the judge that's sort of the her um, emergency, chair of emergency management group. So what I read in the most recent update was alarming. Um, it has missed, and I don't want it to hit the islands. There was just hope that it would kind of break the thing up. But it's missed most of the islands, and now they're showing that it's probably going to be coming in at the center of the state, a Category 3 or higher. This is just what I've received across the computer. Um, then go into the Gulf, potentially could go north, more northerly and just break up in the northern part of Florida or Georgia. But um, this, again, is just, uh, I get kind of an emergency, state emergency announcement. Very uncertain. But, I mean, this morning it was saying might glance off of front now we're more going in through the center of Florida. Uh, through Orlando. Yes, uh, ish. Looks like Orlando, Tampa, ish. The question is the Gulf, of course, for all of us. Um, so let me just see where I've got it here. The one view I have shows like Sunday at 8, it's in the Gulf. It could go north. We all know that there's just tracking here. But my point is, and my thought, just for y'all to think about, what I would typically say that we're going to do is even if we got done at 2 or 3 tomorrow, we would talk jury instructions and come back Friday morning and do closing. We just have to watch what's happening because I know these folks are watching it too. And even though there's not a chance it's going to be in Pensacola on Friday, it's, it may be close to closing in on the state of Florida. That may induce some anxiety among the jurors that they need to be doing things. So I am putting it out there for y'all to think about. We're going to get more information. Um, every time there's an update, we're going to have more information. But And it depends on what time we end anyway. But we have to keep that in mind, and that was another reason I was trying to make sure we stayed on track. Um, but now I'm concerned that even on Friday they're going to be anxious. So it's just something to think about. We don't know enough, but if we got to a point, I mean, where we could do it tomorrow night, we just have to see where we are because there is the counterbalance. Yes, the better world for the attorneys and probably the jury, and definitely in a normal situation, is they come in fresh Friday morning, you've had time to think about your closing, you do your best jobs, they are rested and they listen their best and hopefully make their best decision. But I don't know at what point they feel anxious. I'm feeling anxious, but I'm the one watching the screen and I'm the one that's sort of the court contact on this stuff. Um, I'm just putting it out there for y'all to, to be aware of. I mean, I know you're aware there's something out there, but just that it's, cha I mean, you're not looking at your computer like I am mine, so. Well, Judge, if Mr. Barasa doesn't have his witnesses coming till one tomorrow, I, mean, I don't think we could finish his case. Well, I will probably have rebuttal. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm anticipating. I think I know what they're going to put in their case, so I'm going to have rebuttal. Well, I wasn't sure how far we would get today. I thought that if we got far enough, maybe there are a couple of witnesses Mr. Barasa could have. I know that the chiropractor may not be flexible, so well, to speak. Uh, he may be because he's usually closed down on Thursday, and I'm going to talk to him at 7 o'clock in the morning. So, so there I might be, we can see how far we get, and there may be some witnesses he could move up before lunch, potentially. If I can get, I can get Gary Willis on, number 17, and Megan, Megan Knox is on the way. Okay. For sure, I guess now she's here. What about Jeff, uh, Jennifer Wilkerson? She's with FDLE, and I believe they're, I'm sure they're closed. Um, okay. Um, can you call Jeff Brown or no? today? Um, 
even though it's not in the order you might. I mean, y'all are now back on, I feel like we're back on track, but I've added this, this thing that the hurricane potential problem is what's out there now. Okay. I mean, I have the order for a reason. I understand you do. Um, I'm just... OCD, so, I mean, I understand, but I feel like we picked up a significant amount of speed. And if I could get through 17 and 18, um, 19 is not going to be long at all because there's no DNA in this case. And I think the defense will stipulate to her qualifications, so I won't have to go through, you know, qualifying her as an expert. They'll just stipulate. Um, Jeff Brown is going to probably take some time because it involves cell phone downloads. And then um, Spears' cell tower records, I don't think she will be too, too long. What, what I'll do then, I'll, when I talk to Dr. Roberts, I'll ask him how long it takes for him to get here and maybe to set him on call. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good to have him because if we could do that at least. And be, right, a little bit longer than the rest of them. The rest of them are going to be there. Okay. She's I, already called several blocks. That we look, I would be delighted if it's shifted, obviously, further to the east and it's moving more out in the Atlantic at tomorrow, by tomorrow morning and there's less concern, but I'm just making you aware of it. I'm going to give you all a five-minute break, and if we're good, um, we'll talk before we part today on that issue about Ms. We can talk about it after the jury's released about Ms. Ritchie and her testimony, okay? All right, everybody gets a quick five minutes.